So I think the the gold standard, I'm gonna call you a super bicep, a super bi. Welcome back to another episode of the Casually Fit Life Podcast. We are your hosts, I Fisher here. And I'm Anthony. Perfect. We have another couple of topics for you today. Some good ones here. The first mm-hmm. one, it's going to be a, one that I'm looking forward to here. The top five exercises for building bigger and stronger biceps. Top yeah, it's of- important to be by sometimes, so it's a, we got to keep it on the list. You said you're... What'd you say? What? <laughs> Healthy snacks, topic number two. That's a good one. I'm interested to see how I can improve my snack game here. And then uh, the perfect gym bag. What is in your perfect gym bag? We will get to that at the end. Nice. So let's start off. Topic number one, bigger and stronger biceps. You have five exercises here, and I'll throw in a couple as we go too. Cool. Well, when I think about bigger biceps, that's like you're trying to be more handsome. It's a it's a manly thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I think about if you take away exercise, what professions have the biggest biceps or the biggest arms in general? And like the two that come to mind, and not necessarily manly, but I imagine men doing them. One would be a hunter, especially a bow hunter. Mm, interesting. not a spear hunter um and then the other would be a blacksmith because blacksmiths are yoked i was gonna say a lumberjack and a blacksmith yes lumberjack that's another really good one yeah but i mean you could throw in like um I, i'm just thinking of it because i was watching a joe rogan podcast the other week and the one ufc fighter francis Ngannou. i don't know if you're familiar with him but he um I believe he's from, hmm, I can't remember where he's from in Africa, but he's from a country in Africa. And, um, but he grew up working in the salt mines over there. And this guy is, is 260 pounds shredded, like shredded 265, probably, I don't know, six, four or something like that. But, um, that's who I think of also. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. a minor, some sort of minor. Right. Well, and then you have the perfect physical specimen of Lu Zhaojun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. But none of these people in their profession, they don't really do bicep curls. So curls were not on my list. So what I did want to think about in my head is what makes bigger biceps? And I think it comes down to time under tension more so than maximal weight. Okay. Gymnasts also have super big biceps, and most of the things that gymnasts do are straight armed. It's true. It's a good Tumbling, point. Tumbling, pommel horse. On the rings, they pride themselves in being able to go straight armed all the way out to the side. Insane. Yeah. So for a hunter, I think of repeated bow pulls, and they're just holding, holding it. Yep, yep. Because they're waiting. And then what happens when you kill something? You got to drag it back or carry it back. So you have your arm out straight to the side and you're just walking. And then a, a blacksmith, you'd argue, is mostly elbow extension because they're hammering things mm-hmm. and holding things in place that are super, super heavy. So that doesn't even sound like a bicep movement, but they're jacked. Yeah, no, no, that's a good point. The time under tension, that's a pretty um, well-accepted uh mechanism for hypertrophy right i'm pretty sure it's time under tension and then like total volume right right Which i guess would kind of influence time under tension by by the nature of it so that makes sense to me um trying to think here of what exercises because i do i do do some curls mm-hmm. a couple times a week oh no i do curls one time a week and then the other I do weighted chin-ups. That's the one I like. Nice. I like doing weighted chin-ups and mixing up my rep scheme between like fives and tens, Mm -hmm. obviously changing the reps or changing the weight as needed. 
So that's another one I really like, the weighted chin-ups. Do you use tempo? Um, no, nothing strict with tempo. It's just controlled, you know? Right, not getting to the top and dropping straight down on the bottom. No, because my shoulder would completely <laughs> be destroyed after that. <laughs> I imagine you doing weighted pull-ups and when you start, the weight is off the ground and then you drop straight down and your feet hit the ground and you realize you're not that tall. Yeah. It's your potato head. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's also important to note here for our CrossFit fan, CrossFit friends, these weighted chin-ups are not kipping. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that was an event in the CrossFit Games. It was. Max, they did like 130 pounds or something like that. The Jason Kalipa or Rich Froning might have won that one. Yeah. So here's my five, my list of five exercises, and we can go into each one. So number one was a waiter's curl. Number two was a Russian kettlebell swing. Number three was a farmer carry, four legless rope climbs, mm -hmm. and then number five would be a banded supination. Now, that one's an extra one that people don't normally do because they don't know that a bicep, what the function of a bicep is, really. And we get to, let's talk about that one first. It's so if you stand up nice and tall, pull your shoulder blades together, you pull your elbows into your body and you have your arms out like you're sitting at a desk, but you're standing up. So supination would be taking that hand with your palm down and flipping it over so that your palm comes up. So if you look at your bicep and you go through that turn, you should kind of see your bicep get tighter and smaller. So that's like supination. So the bicep is a supinator. Hmm. So for banded supination, what I do is take a band and hook it onto a rig or a doorknob and then start with my palm down. So if it's in my right hand, the band is going to be pulling to the left. I'm going to turn my hand palm up and then slowly bring it back. It's not a big movement. It's not a super, super strong movement, but you can really jack up that bicep by doing a lot of reps here. So I would do, like you were saying, five to 10. But in this case, I would add a three to five second eccentric tempo, snap it off fast, go back nice and slow. Or I'd stick to like the 20, 15 to 20 rep range where you're cranking on it and going pretty fast. I like that. Yeah, it's fun because um, it's not something that you do that often and it's a little bit like it takes your shoulder out of the equation. Right. You can always tuck like a pillow under your armpit so that your arm stays in place, you know, because it's super, super easy to overwork the wrist, aka the elbow muscles, and it's super, super easy to overinflame your shoulders too. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I also like the... Um two of them that you have on here I really like are the farmer's carry and the legless rope climb. I like yeah. those. Yeah. Those, those are, those ones by the nature of them almost make me feel a little bit more like the lumberjack. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, right. Climbing a rope and holding some heavy stuff and picking yeah. it up and putting it over there. Yeah, exactly. So I guess that's similar to the time under tension, like with the, with the farmer's carry, that's just pure time under tension. Right. Obviously. Yep. Um, and you can go super heavy on that. And the, oh. what I like about that is because that'll help like with the, with the weight, it'll help, uh, like release that testosterone and growth hormone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, weight, get strong. Yeah. And that's how, I mean, you need that to grow, right? A yeah. banded supination isn't necessarily going to release those hormones in extensive, uh, amounts. No. And I don't even remember if I've been that sore from it, but that the banded supination kind of sits between eccentric concentric and the isometric of the farmer carries right you know because you're doing it for a long time you're just opening that door turning that door handle over and over and over and over again and then your body's like uh oh i need to be bigger to allow us to do this more often so then we'll get big right and legless rope climbs are super hard but the thing that makes them in, worth it in my mind is that you climb up, right? Your arm never fully extends. So you're sitting at like this, uh, you know, 45 to 135 degrees of elbow flexion. Then you're running through, but then you get to the top and don't wrap your feet around. Yeah. Now you go down. Yeah. So I think the, the gold standard, I'm going to call you a super bicep, a super bi. If you can climb up and down a rope from butt to ceiling to butt, to ceiling to butt again. 
So, so sorry, was that up and down twice? Yeah, up and down twice from a seated position with your legs up off the floor. And if you're doing it in an L, you probably have some jack abs too. Yeah, that's sick. I mean, I, I would do the L, I would do the seated um, rope climbs, but only to like uh, the rig, which is maybe like nine feet or something like that. Yeah, I'd say like, I'd probably say like 15 feet would be my gold standard challenge to anyone who wants to go after this. Like, I feel like I could, I mean, I could definitely do 15 foot one, one ascent. Um, and then I, you know, I could just fall down, whatever it takes to not put my <laughs> feet on the rope. But um, right. two in a row, that's- I would say tough. you could go up, down, and then down another 15 feet. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you could go up, down, up, down. I don't think I could, that, that's pretty rough. Right. And I, this is one of my favorite markers for health, like a pull up, you're either light enough or you're strong enough. Yeah. But if you can do this, you're probably pretty healthy. So all those insurance companies who are looking to establish premiums, put two legless 15 foot rope climbs in a row. That person is going to live. Yeah, seriously. Uh... Now the real trick too, aside from being able to do the legless rope climbs is take six weeks and do it every single day. Two legless rope climbs up and down. That's it. Try and do it with as little rest as possible, as straight through as possible. Shake those arms out. Please don't fall off the rope because then I'll feel bad. But every single day, do somewhere between two and five legless rope climbs. If you can go up and down twice with no, like, with no support, then that's it. That's good for the day. I'm doing biceps tomorrow, and I think I'm going to do some of these legless rope climbs. I do uh, light farmer carries all the time. I just grab a cup of coffee or water and carry it at my size. And um, I like single arm farmer carries a lot more than like a trap bar farmer carry. I don't know how you feel. I like doing, I mean, the suitcase carry that you're talking about is yep. definitely great. Um, I like just being balanced for the most, it depends on what I'm going for, right? Like if I'm trying to get as much weight as I can, I'm going to go with two hands. Yeah. Um, obviously. But uh, yeah, sometimes I mix in those suitcase ones. But I don't really ever go that heavy on a suitcase carry. Like well, the heaviest standard kettlebell in a gym is 72 pounds. And I feel like that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, we have 97s. And those are pretty good. You would have 97s at your gym. <laughs> right. I was like, hey guys, somebody bought the 97. They're like, who? Who would do that? <laughs> what else? What else do we have? We have two more here. Waiters, curls, and Russian kettlebell swings. By the way, I just love Russian kettlebell swings. One of my all-time favorite exercises for simplicity's sake. Yeah. And I hate that we have to say Russian now. I know. Because we've gotten confused about what a kettlebell swing is. It's more like we have kettlebell swings and then American kettlebell swings. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to start saying. Yeah. But everyone's going to say, Ty, I didn't know you were that strong that you can use the 96 for 50 reps. <laughs> You're like, wait, what are we, are we talking about the same thing? Um, so I'm talking about the Russian kettlebell swing. That is a straight arm kettlebell swing. And uh, on my bucket list at some point, the goal is always to do one set of 150. If I'm going to burn out my biceps, you also get glutes, you get back, you get your hamstrings involved, but do um, 150 Russian kettlebell swings for time is a super awesome, super quick workout. Now it'd be really cool if I could do 150 Russian kettlebell swings at 150 pound kettlebell. Oh God. I know, right? Yeah. They do sell them that big. Is that your bucket list? Yeah, why the heck not? Oh, no. all right, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've done like a little over a hundred in a row with a, like a 53 pound kettlebell and that felt amazingly awful. Yeah. I love that too. That 53 pound ke kettlebell, the Russian swing. It's just such a good exercise. Yeah. Tim Ferriss in his book, the four hour body says like the only exercise you need is the kettlebell swing. Cause it builds some, the perfect posterior hmm. big biceps. I'm trying to think what else I can rhyme heavy hamstrings. I don't know. I'm running out of good ideas. Hot hammies. Hot hammies. There you go. Hot hammies. But yeah, it's, the kettlebell swing is awesome. 
Um, now, to go into the last one, the waiter's curl. So a waiter holds a tray. Now, as you move your arm up and down, that tray has to stay parallel to the ground. Otherwise, everything's going to fall off. So in a waiter's curl, I like to do it seated from like a little bit of a, like an incline position. Uh, you put a plate on your hand. So then as you move your elbow into flexion, your wrist goes into extension. And when your wrist is in extension or your wrist is tilted away from your body, it turns off these muscles that cross the elbow, the flexion muscles. Because, you know, when you flex, you make a bicep, you pull your wrist down and make it look bigger. Oh, yeah. So in a waiter's curl, you just have this little set of counter, counter action so that we're truly isolating the bicep more than if we had the wrist getting involved. You know, everyone's done bent over rows and when it starts to get heavy, instead of going up the rest of the way with your arm, you like cock your wrist and you're like, oh, got it, got the rep. All right, I like that. Plate curls, waiter's curls, I like that. Waiter's curls, I mean, you have waiter's bows where you, I don't even know why you, they call them that. It's just like a good morning. Mm, mm, okay, where you hold, up, hold a plate there, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I've never seen a waiter grab a tray of dishes and bend over it with it in front of their chest. No, me either. I also hate good mornings, so. Me too. We should talk about how shitty good mornings are sometime. <laughs> yes. We can do a whole episode on it. We should. So five, five exercises for biceps, the waiter's curl, the high rep Russian kettlebell swing. Forget that American thing. It does kind of get your biceps filled in American swings, but I feel like it's not necessary. It's not. And then the good old-fashioned farmer's carries, Grab a trap bar, grab a pair of kettlebells, grab some dumbbells, grab a small to medium-sized animal, whatever, drag them around. Legless rope climbs and banded supination. And then my bonus, my bonus in here would be to do some drop sets. Drop sets are great. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, any type of hypertrophy you're doing, uh, drop sets are fantastic. Typically I what I do with drop sets is I'll, um, maybe you have some sort of protocol in mind, but what I typically do is whatever my working sets are, if it was three or five sets or whatever, could be 10 sets. I don't know. The drop sets will just be like way lighter and more reps if I can, you know what I mean? So like if it's five by five, my drop sets will be like three by 10 or something. Oh, nice. Okay. So do you do five by five and then three by 10 or do you do five then 10 five then 10 um in that scenario i probably would have done five by five get my working sets in mm -hmm. and then go to like i don't know 70 percent or whatever is appropriate for three by 10 so to save the casually fit life podcast from legal ramifications <laughs> please have a partner when you do drop sets someone to spy you Especially if you're talking about legless rope climb drop sets, because I don't even know what that <laughs> looks like. And you just drop from the top. <laughs> so when I think about it, I think of like a bench press. So, you know, say you start with like 145. So you have a 25, a 25, and then maybe even another 25. So you have 195. That's like 195 is a lot to bench, but um, you do five or six reps or four to eight reps. And then some, you rack it up and somebody pulls those weights off and now you do max reps. Yep. Yeah. And then you pull the weight off again and you do max reps again. So like in my brain, I do 145, 95 empty barbell. And by the end of the drop set, the empty barbell, you're looking at like five to 10 reps because you're just literally smoked. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've done that before. That's horrendous. Oh, it's so fun. Especially because you have to do a couple sets of that. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah, you and go then, from like 14, 7, 4 to like 2, 6, and 5. Yeah. Cool. I like it. And then bonus bonus was my weighted chin-ups. Weighted chin-ups. Do them. They're awesome. And they actually let your biceps work instead of your lats. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And it's super cool because I always think about Ben Affleck in that Batman movie training sequence. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. I'm like, oh, he's jacked. Cool. His workout was like all biceps. It was chin-ups. It was the yeah. rope whipping and then tire flips. It's perfect. Yeah, it sounds like Ben Affleck, Batman. <laughs> okay, cool. So topic number two, healthy snacks. So 
what do we have here for healthy snacks? You got a list going on. I like it. So you made me always want to do this for now and forever. Okay. Um, when we give a term like healthy, we need to define it because it's shit if you don't. Yes. I so like healthy snacks to me are whole foods. They're moderately moderate to low in total calorie content. And they're nutrient dense. Okay. I like so that. I don't think like, they have to be organic. They don't have to be grass fed. You don't have to kill an animal and get it yourself. But those are my three. Am I missing anything? No, I was just going to say from a snack standpoint, and you, you did say this with the calories, I would typically think like 200, maybe max would be like 300 calories in a snack. Yeah. So like a yogurt is like 200 calories, yogurt with fruit in it. And that's a pretty good snack. Yeah. Yeah. So now I, I subdivided them into four categories. Okay. One was, um, so you had fat, carbs, and protein, which are your three macros. And then I made a fourth category for a, like a mixed macro profile kind of snack. Mm, got you. Like your peanut butters. Yeah. Yeah. Your nut butters generally. So you want to, you want to take away the fats, fats column? Sure. Yeah. I like what you got here. Um, well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about you when I wrote this. The first two I love. So you got here salmon and coconuts, smoked uh -huh. salmon and dried coconuts to be specific. Those two are sound delicious. Salmon, I imagine you could like grill up maybe or fry it, whatever, how you make it, but like two or three of them. And that would probably last you for a couple of days with snacks, right? Cause you could have mm -hmm. one or two snacks per day. Um, the coconuts, I've never, uh, do, you, do you buy dried coconuts somewhere? I'm not... Yep, so if you've ever baked with coconut, you get shredded coconut. Mm, okay. And sometimes they add sugar to the shredded coconut for baking and sometimes they don't, but they dry it and then they break it apart. And it's, um, it's pretty chewy. It's pretty hard to chew. I guess, I don't know if I have a comparison. Like raw broccoli stem like a little bit stiffer, but you can still bite into it. Um, it does taste a little weird if you're used to coconut as in candy. Like Almond Joys? Right. I mean, I love me and Almond Joy. They're and great. that's almost a good snack. They're great. Just a little too much co uh, sugar. Sugar, in it. yeah, yeah. But it's coconut sugar, right? Sugar, 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 sugar. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, but no, salmon, coconut, those are two great ones right there. The one that you got me second guessing here is olives. Um, not a big olive fan, I'll be honest with you. Especially when people put it on pizza. I don't get oh, it. Oh, I like olives on pizza a lot. I just, I don't get it, I'm sorry. But I guess what I don't know about them is that they have a pretty good fat content, apparently. They're almost like exclusively made of fat. Did not even know that. That's yeah. Much Wait, I would you think. rather have olives or co or um, pineapple on your pizza? Neither. Don't put those. You got to pick one. If I have to pick. Yeah. I might go olives. Wow. I like, and I even like pineapples. I really do. I'm, I'm surprised. But on pizza, I just don't get it. Anyway. Nice olive pizza with some feta and some basil. Yeah, I could hide the olive. I feel like I can hide the olive on the pizza. Yeah. I can't hide the pineapple. No, definitely not. Too strong. Um, well, and I want people to know it's okay to have martini, dirty martinis as a snack because they have olives in there. So it's, it's helpful. Perfect. That's great. In case you need to hit your macros at the end of the night on a weekend. Yes. I'm going to do that with a DiGiorno and throw some olives on there too. Fat snack, check in the box. Now, have you ever made chia seed pudding? I have not made chia seed pudding. I've only ever used chia seeds like in a drink. You know what I mean? Like and mix it in like water or like a shake or something. Like you put it in, shake it up and then drink it right away. Yeah. So if you leave chia in water, do you know that it like absorbs it and turns it into like a little jelly or jello? I've only, I mean, I've, I could see it absorb it a bit when I shake it up and like they puff up, but I never like let it sit. Yeah, if you leave it overnight, and I don't know the ratio, but 
it makes it into like a pudding. So I imagined in this scenario, you pick your favorite, like uh, heavy cream, which would probably be delicious. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you put in like some cocoa powder or some cinnamon or some vanilla, and then you just mix it in and let it sit overnight. Whatever your, your whole fat dairy product of choice is, you put that in there and then you get like a fake yogurt, but it's chia seeds, which are super high in omega-3s and good, for, good fat. And then you have the fat that it's actually in, which is even more helpful. And then you get a nice little dessert. That sounds interesting. I mean, I would give it a shot. Yeah, it's like a cottage cheesy texture, a little bit on the, the more liquidy side. But if you're used to eating ice cream and in your head, it's it looks kind of like ice cream because it's like a solid dairy. Right. And then you take a bite, it doesn't taste anything like that at all. Mm. I don't mind cottage cheese. I like cottage cheese. Yeah, it used to be one of my favorite protein snacks. Exactly, protein snack. So we can skip over the carbs. So I used to put protein powder, chocolate protein powder on cottage cheese and mix it up. You used to put, you said protein powder? Chocolate protein cheese. powder. Huh, okay. That's chocolate interesting. Milk. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. That's interesting. I might try that. So if you want to get really specific, I would get the 4% milk fat generic cottage cheese. Yeah, always. Large and, curd and, or small curd? Uh, oh, man. I think I like large curd. Yeah, so do I. So then I would get the um, gold standard chocolate protein powder, which I imagine that's the one you use. Um. When you say gold standard, or is that a brand? <laughs> I think, I don't, I used to think it was, G, oh, it's Optimum Nutrition. Oh, I use B, gold. I use, um, shit, what is it called? I just had it. It's called Syntha 6. Okay, so you're fancy. It's actually a really good deal. <laughs> I believe it. That's why I use my protein more often than gold standard, because you get double the amount for the same price. But beside the point. The, G the Optimum Nutrition Gold Standard 100% Whey Double Rich Chocolate or whatever chocolate flavor you like or whatever flavor you like in general, you just mix it in and put together. Now, I do want to put a little asterisk because cottage cheese was in my mixed macros category. Yeah, there's a lot of protein in that and fat yeah. as well. Yeah. But protein powder is a super, super easy one that should go in the protein category. Yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. But what else do we have in the, I like what you have there in protein, by the way, beef jerky and mm -hmm. some hard boiled eggs. Classic. What accent was that? I, I don't know. <laughs> it changed halfway through, I'm sure. Got it. But uh, I like that. Beef jerky is super good, especially if you can go um, an easy beef jerky one is when you just go to the whatever gas station and you get the Jack Link's beef jerky that they have there. Mm. So good. You can just get the plain one too. You don't have to get any of the flavors. Just the plain one. So good. Yep. At Costco, they have this, um, it's Korean style barbecue pork jerky. And I would put it under the protein category, but there's more carbohydrates because it's like teriyaki glazed pork. Yeah. And pork is a little fattier than beef jerky. It is really good, but you got to know your macros and just read the label. And then hard boiled eggs. Do you have egg salad ever? Um, I haven't had it in a while, but I do love me some egg salad. Yeah. It's, I end up eating way more eggs than I thought I was able to eat. But egg salad, though, you would have to put in the mixed bag, right? Because there's going to be some, some more fat in there, right? Yeah. You're going to need a little bit of fat to make it a little creamy. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter how much or what you put in. It just has to be just enough so that it doesn't taste like dry hard boiled eggs mashed up. Yeah. yeah. Like mashed potatoes without butter. They don't really. What's the point? Yeah, there's no point. It's, a, it's supposed to be a vehicle for butter. Yeah. Well, that one's that one's an easy one. Right. And I forget this a lot, too, that if I'm hungry, I should just have a protein shake. Yep. And just give me give myself a half hour to sit on it and see what happens. But that's a super easy way to get more water in pretty quickly. And then you get some pretty, pretty unilateral choice of macro. So just protein, a little bit of carbs, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, all right. Now carbs. I feel like this one was pretty easy because everything is a carbohydrate as a snack generally. Yeah. 
Not pork rinds. Pork rinds would go in that fat category and the protein category. I was going to put them in the mixed category. Yeah. When we got there. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, uh, do you like raw veggies? Raw veggies, hard pass. Except for onions. Unless they're on like a sandwich or something, they got to be on something or like, you know, I'm not just going to eat a raw veggie by itself. Hard pass. Did you say onion? Yeah, I would do like onions on a sandwich <laughs> or something. You don't just hold an onion like an apple and. <sighs> I've wanted to be able to do that ever since I saw that movie Holes, but. Uh, I... <laughs> but that's just a little much. <laughs> well, good thing. Well, if you got COVID, you would have been just fine. You wouldn't yeah. smell it, you wouldn't taste it, and you'd be able to overcome it. Yeah, yeah. Although but, your yeah, partner I, I... might be crying the whole day. I, I like my raw veggies on, like, they got to be on something, you know what I mean? Or in a, like a salad is a good way to do it, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. fine. But, uh, yeah. So what about, like, uh, uncooked fresh bell peppers? I'm not a huge pepper fan, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Okay. I mean, I will eat them, like, grilled mm -hmm. up with something else. But sometimes they just have that weird, I don't even know how to describe it taste to them where it's almost like it's too it reminds me too much of like a tomato in a sense i don't know and you don't like cooked tomatoes or raw tomatoes if you had to choose i would prefer cooked tomatoes yeah oh yeah we talked about this like uh it might have been last week or two weeks ago. yeah yeah well i think that bell peppers are one of my favorite uncooked veggies and then i'd put carrots and celery in there too because I throw them on top of salads pretty often. Mm. And well, one thing I just started taking this week was this, it's this green drink. You know what I mean? Like a powder that you mix in and it's like mm -hmm. has all these different mixes of fruits and veggies. And this one has like a mushroom blend in it too. So that's pretty cool. Do you, does it taste good? No, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you just... You just put like that much water in the cup. So that way you can just like take it as a shot, basically. <laughs> Why don't you just pour the powder in your mouth and then just take a big sip of water? That's, ba I, yeah, that's basically what I do. Okay. I put uh, it in the cup first, but yeah, there's not very much water in there and I just take it as a shot. Yeah, that sounds gross, but I mean, it gets you your micros. Yeah, exactly. What so, about fruits? You like fruit? Fruits are perfect. That's a great snacky carb what's your favorite fruit um that's tough I, it depends like i mean i love strawberries are always great um bananas can be super easy mm -hmm. apples are i'm hit or miss on apples grapes are great have you had the cotton candy grapes actually we just bought some i haven't tried them yet you haven't had one no, I haven't tried them yet. Go get one right now. Right now. This is a live taste test. All right, all right. We're, we're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> so for everybody who's not paying attention, Ty Fisher, formerly fruit and veggie averse, is now trying his first ever cotton candy grape. I've had them twice. One were green and one, one packet was green and one bag was purple and I couldn't tell the difference between the two. All right, here we go. But it's cotton candy. Great time. So first of all, before I try it, I will say uh, my fiance, she bought them and she, she was excited and then she tried them and she said that doesn't taste like cotton candy at all. So I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we'll see. No, I can taste it. <laughs> it's just straight up cotton candy. I can taste it. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's got to be so bad for you. It has to be, right? Yeah, I'd imagine. Wow. Those aren't going to make it. They're not going to make it the rest of the day. What was she talking about? She had just washed them. So I'm sure like maybe there were some chemicals on them from washing them or something like that. But um, here, I brought over this for anybody who's watching the video. This is the, uh, the green drink I was just talking about. It's called Super Greens Alkalizing Formula. 50 organic superfoods. There we go. And mushrooms. Yeah, it's got mushrooms, probiotics, super greens. Mm. 
And it's not only does it have fruits and super greens, but it also has vegetables. So I don't know what the super greens are coming from, but uh, they're apparently different than the vegetables. Well, I think we can uh, agree that cotton candy grapes are in. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Now, before we, uh, before we move on here, when we, um, I like mixed macro foods because they're a meal replacement mm -hmm. or a meal additive. So when I think of just a single item, a single fat, a single carb or a protein, there's a, there's a purpose other than filling me up. So if I'm having more fat, it's because I can't eat for a while and I need to be you know, satiate or have energy for the next couple hours. If I'm eating carbs, I want to feel full or my mouth is tired, but they're mostly low calorie foods. And I want to um, get some, some minerals in me protein. I'm trying to consume more than I already am. Mm -hmm. So whenever I eat a meal, I try to have a mixed macro meal. So now if it's like, you know, I'm at work and I can't have a whole meal because everyone looks at you when you microwave fish and uh, some homemade stuff. Yeah, don't do that. Anyway, mixed macros, this is where I'm going. So this is my meal replacement. You can get a lot higher than the 200 calorie list here because you could replace it. You could just scale it up and then it's a full meal or you scale it back down and then it's a snack. So the first one I had is everyone's favorite mixed macro, nut butters. Perfect. It really is. It's so good. And you probably have like two different jars at least in your cabinet right now. Mm-hmm. I love them. I'm a peanut butter guy, but I'll do any of them, to be honest with you. Yeah. And every, sometimes, or the first time I ever tried almond butter, everyone's like hyping it up. Like it tastes amazing. No, my first bite, it was kind of gross. Yeah. It's a super letdown. You're just yeah. amazed that there's something else like peanut butter. That's not peanut butter. And you're just amazed by it. Yeah. And then you eat it and you're like, wait a second, we should stick to peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jiffy knew what they were doing. Peanuts are cheaper. They taste better. But I don't hate almond butter, though. Like, I will eat it. Yeah. That's totally fine. I don't hate it. So, yeah, but it's not peanut butter. It's definitely not peanut butter. We need to get that straight. Mm -hmm. So then I had yogurt. Now, yogurt can go kind of a couple of different directions. It depends on how much fat is in there. Full fat yogurt I like, but I'm lactose intolerant, so I can only eat a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them can get pretty sugary too. Yeah. A lot of the times when they say fat free, that means that they added so much sugar in it. It's disgusting. Yeah. So you gotta be careful with that. So then I had cheese, good old fashioned cheese. Um, and I said real and older cheese is better than younger cheese. Mm. Okay. So you I have like this that. fermentation, a little bit of that in there, which is super good for your gut too. Just uh, cheese can either make it go faster or it can stop you up. Depends on who you are. Yeah. No, I like cheese. Um, I'm a big fan of cheese. I've made my own cheese at home several times. Uh, mozzarella, right? Yeah, the mozzarella is a, is a little tougher because like there's a, there's a really basic cheese you can make that's called, I think they just call it like farmer's cheese or whatever. Mm. And it's literally like just milk and then you need some sort of acid like lemon juice and salt. Yeah. And salt. Mm -hmm. And it's super easy to make mozzarella. You need the, um, what do they call it? Renin, I believe, or something like that. It's like an enzyme. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyways, made it a couple of times, love it. And it's a great way to get some fat and protein in, uh, homemade. Just, you just have to be careful because you can easily eat so much of it. <laughs> I'm thinking you use like a, a $4 gallon of milk to make a gallon of cheese is it like one to one no no because you lose like the curd and the whey mm -hmm. like the whey is like the liquid part of it so i mean i don't know what the ratio is but you definitely lose a lot of it still a half gallon of cheese for four dollars that's a lot of cheese yeah i mean that's probably probably is like a half i guess i'm not sure yeah that's a lot of cheese i i don't know if it's a half but either way, you get like, I know we were making like probably like two fists worth of cheese. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and it's cool because you made it yourself. Yeah, exactly. So that's cool. And then my last 
so you have like hummus hummus is a big mixed one and that goes well with some veggies it's hard to just eat hummus with a spoon and then i had avocado in this mixed macro category in my head too because it is fat but most people don't just like suck out the avocado or just like <laughs> eat avocado with their fingers yeah so i'm a big guacamole fan but it's simple just onions guacamole. lime juice salt pepper done Right. And then, of course, like you already mentioned, chicharrones. Yes. <laughs> those are so good. That's the protein and the fat. Those are the pork rinds. Um, and those are so good. Barbecue. I do barbecue, do the hot ones, do the salt and vinegar ones, do the salt and pepper ones. Honestly, salt and pepper is like a super underrated flavor. It is super underrated, but I got to actually be honest. For me, it was super underrated with like chips like yeah. salt and pepper chips are so good the salt they're like they're better than most other chips but the salt and pepper pork rinds are actually not as good as the other flavors so yeah. do you have a brand recommendation on your pork rinds or just whatever they have whole foods what i i get whatever they have mm -hmm. i don't even i get the same one every week but i don't even know what it's called <laughs> nice i just know where it is in the store I hate when they change stuff up on you in the store. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. There's a lot I could complain about. So maybe that would be another episode too. Like my my top 10 complaints about the fitness and health industry. Or, or just life in general. <laughs> I have too many. All right, now let's, uh, let's move on to our last topic before everyone gets sick and tired of hearing us talk about food while they're driving to work in the morning. Mm. The perfect gym bag. Perfect gym bag. Perfect gym bag, yes. All right. Oh. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go ahead and just give you my essentials. Mm -hmm. This is just for me and the type of workouts that I do. But my essentials in my gym bag, they don't actually go in my bag, but they should. They go next to it, but I'm gonna say that they're part of the bag. Uh, and that's gonna be my training shoes. Mm -hmm and my lifting belt sometimes i'll wrap that lifting belt around the bag so that kind of counts yeah you know what i mean yeah um so those two i need tape for my thumbs i need a jump rope and then i also would like to have i mean i could stop there but i would if i'm being picky i want something to wrap my legs for if i climb a rope mm -hmm. and i even want some knee sleeves not for my knees, but for when I do a lot of weightlifting, I leave them on my shins so my shins don't get sliced up. Oh, you're talking ollie lifting. Yes. I thought you were saying you squat with them around your ankles. No, no, no. Like, like they look cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. When I'm doing ollie lifting, I put them right on my shins so my so it doesn't like shred up my shins. So I think the only I'd add maybe like one or two things, but one of the things that I would add is a towel. Because if you've ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it's the most important thing that you need no matter what is your towel. I haven't read that. But it's a good book. Anyway, a towel can accomplish a lot. Like if you rip your pants, you can put it around you because you squat so much that your butt's so big, it rips your pants. Mm -hmm. If you start to bleed, you can just throw your hand in the towel and you can catch it. Or if you take a shower, which I don't recommend, showers are gross, you can dry yourself off. Yeah, you shouldn't shower ever. No. And then if you do like burpees and you want something on the floor to keep you from touching it, you have a towel. Right. Um, and then the other thing would be a water bottle. Yeah. I never take water to the gym. It's weird. Really? Yeah, I never take it. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know why. It is weird. I kind of wish I did because sometimes I get thirsty. <laughs> 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 at least on the, the way home is the worst when you're thirsty yeah, yeah. why didn't i think about this um, um all right so i have some other some other things to put in there what uh, about what I, about your covid mask huh yes <laughs> yes you know your workout mask like your wrist wraps you never wash it and it's just always nasty yeah yeah exactly super important dude honestly yeah. though like like a legit just like a covid mask mm -hmm. that if you want to step up the game a little bit while you're training like it makes it harder to breathe look i will i will fight you on that 
All right, because let's we have we wear masks at my gym, and I have seen no decrease output on myself from wearing it. No, I have this mask right here. I don't know what brand it is, but it's like a. I thought that was your underwear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to see me in this? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> This this is actually really great. It's like a, I don't even know what fabric it is, but it's like a good like sporty fabric. Stainless steel. Yeah. But when you compare it to those like blue one, like the medical blue ones or whatever, Paper. those ones get like fuzzies that'll get caught in my throat after a, after they get like used a couple times. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it hard to breathe. Is I'll be taking a deep breath and a fuzzy will just go right into my throat. Right in the back of the throat. Yeah. <laughs> start choking on it ah oh, man okay so you said um you said tape was in there you had um so i said a few pairs of extra socks because the worst thing in the world is wet socks yeah. i haven't put um on my list and you can pack stuff up really tight in a couple baggies but i want a change of non-gym clothes or at least a non-gym t-shirt just in case yeah t-shirt's a good call yeah and then um, i said a little extra protein like protein powder or whatever you're like, whatever your thing is, there is some cool protein um, shakers that mm -hmm. have these little compartments on the bottom and then you pack whatever. But if you're like, Oh no, I've forgotten. Now I have to go ballroom dancing. You can put on your non gym shirt and you can knock back protein and you're ready to go dancing. Right. Right. Um, I had wrist wraps. Did you say wrist wraps? I don't know. I didn't. I love my wrist wraps for snatching and over squatting. They're so nice. I never use wrist wraps, but I also haven't like snatched or overhead squatted in about six months. So mm -hmm. maybe if I get back to it. Right. And I don't wear a belt or knee sleeves and you have both of those things in yours. Yeah. Um, and then I put a phone charger because I feel like that's something that's so, so, so important. That would suck. Yeah. <laughs> to have to do it, to have to use it and not have it. Yeah. Well, on that note, also a gun because it would suck a parachute yeah, <laughs> yeah. it definitely suck to have to use a parachute but not have it <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean the other thing that i had in there too is a uh, i had a water bottle and a protein bottle because the protein bottle is protein forever and when you leave it in your gym bag and you forget about it you just want to throw it away but you always want to have some water in there yeah yeah so it's nice because like you can have the blue bottle for water and the uh you know the, the black bottle for protein or whatever it is but i would recommend using a see-through bottle for protein because i have almost died way too many times not knowing what's in a shaker cup yeah i, I thankfully don't use a whole lot of shaker cups anymore i'm just straight out of the regular cups you know mixing it in my kitchen with a spoon okay that's gross what you just mix it with your finger with a like spoon, a, with a spoon no that's terrible at least use a like a ten dollar milk frother no come on come on spoon is plenty if you like wet coated powder balls i actually love them <laughs> you get those little those little protein bombs in there that's disgust. that's almost as gross as your mushroom shot yeah, that's that's about to happen right after this. My super nice. green shot. Oh man. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say the the towel is the towel is my one add to that one. Now, Ty, if you could only have walk into the gym with one thing in your gym bag, that's it. You gotta carry a bag that only holds one thing. What's in it? If it's just one thing, I'm probably wanting my belt. The weight belt, keeping you safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. That's a solid life choice. Yeah, because I, I just don't lift heavy, so that's why I don't need a belt. Yeah, I don't anymore. I don't even need to lift that heavy to need the belt. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone knows on this channel, we are both south of 30. Yeah. yeah. Damn. <laughs> well, on that note, before we keel over and die and uh, we got to go take our medicine, Thank you for joining us on the Casually Fit Life podcast. I hope we gave you some better ideas on how to make better biceps, how to have some better snacks, and what to do farmer carries with all that stuff in your gym bag. Perfect. 
If you guys have any suggestions about what to talk about, leave us in the comments. Uh, we'll uh, use them as inspiration and hopefully get to them. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. And we will see you next time. Peace. Thank you.